Hello, welcome to the Bee Vlog. I'm Bill. Today I have a cutout to do. It's in an RV back here behind me. I'll be getting to that in a minute, but first I wanted to show a little bit about my BVAC that I built. I tested this out in the last cutout I did, and there was a minor change I wanted to make to it. But first of all, let's get over the uh, basics of it. Uh, it's a bucket that's inside another bucket. Uh, the top, uh, I guess, screen system was made from a, another bucket where I just cut off uh, the top third of it and put in a window screen and there's a little ring inside made from the rest of the bucket that is held in by some screws and, and nuts. And then this whole thing gets held into place on top of the bucket with some bolts and, and wing nuts. So the vacuum draws suction and creates a, a vacuum pressure inside this bucket which then draws the bees in through this hose. Um, this screen allows the bees to kind of cluster and have some room so there's a gap between this hose and them so they're not feeling that vacuum pressure pulling on them all the time. Uh, one problem that I may experience with this that I, I didn't have last time because I didn't really vacuum up enough bees is that if this whole screen gets covered with bees then I'll lose suction down at this end of the hose. A couple features here that I added in. Uh, one is this um, cushion. Last time I used this, the bees were coming in through the hose so fast that they were hitting the other side of the bucket and they were getting stunned. So hopefully this cushion, it's just some foam that's hot glued in. Hopefully that cushion will help to preserve them and not stun or kill them. Also, I can adjust the vacuum pressure with this little opening here. Uh, I can open it up all the way for full va for uh, less vacuum and close it up all the way for full vacuum. I tried using a smaller vacuum than this giant shop vac and it didn't work at all. It wasn't getting enough suction. This fatter hose, a uh, two and a quarter inch hose, uh, the purpose of this is with the larger diameter to allow the bees to fly through or be pulled through without hitting the walls quite as, as much because it is a uh, ribbed hose and I didn't want them rubbing all the way down and bouncing off the walls. Um, so having that larger diameter means you have to have a lot more suction. Uh, one thing I wanted to try was reducing this, just the opening diameter so that you don't have to have as much suction but you still have a, a larger hose. Uh, but in this situation, and I'll, you'll see on video in a minute though, there's just not enough room to be able to stick a long adapter in there that has a, a smaller opening. So that's my BVAC. Uh, today I'm going to be giving it the full test because uh, I really need it for this cutout. There's a lot of bees in a very tight space and I'm not really able to open up the walls because it's in an RV and I want to, you know, I don't want to do any damage to the walls. So we have a, a, about an 8 inch by 8 inch opening that we're going to be trying to vacuum the bees out and cutting the comb. A couple other tools that are often used in a cutout are brushes. The last cutout I did, we didn't want to use the brush because feathers seem to work better. They don't mind it as much. I'm going to be abandoning this bee brush for uh, use for sweeping bees because the bees really get tangled up in these um, bristles and they tend to get aggravated and aggressive when I use it. The feather has been so great. This is just a regular old turkey feather. You can sweep bees with it and they don't seem to mind at all. They don't get tangled up in the feather and you can just sweep them right off any, whatever they're on and they, they, they show no signs of aggression what, whatsoever. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than a bee brush. You know, you can buy three of them at a craft store for like a dollar. Um, this one was a friend of mine gave to me uh, just from a turkey. Or you can go out to a turkey farm and get a whole bunch of free ones. Um, so these are the ones that I really recommend and I'm going to be sticking with using feathers from now on for sweeping and brushing bees. So here's the beehive in the RV. Um, you can't see any comb right now because there's so many bees in there. Last time I was here, we opened, it was maybe about a month and a half, six, or six to eight, eight weeks ago. Uh, we opened this panel up and you couldn't even see the comb or the bees. Because uh, above it, there's about a 12 inch rise in the cavity. And they were just all up inside. You couldn't see them down through this opening. You had to get up inside it. So they've doubled in size in the past month or so since I was here and there's a lot more bees. It looks like they're running out of room so they may be getting ready to swarm soon. Uh, it should be interesting to see if I find any queen cells when I start getting in there. But I'm really going to have to vacuum them out just to 
get to the comb. Uh, I'm not going to be using any smoke on this cutout because I think that that will just drive them backwards and I want them more towards the front so they're easier to get out. There's bees. three queen cells here. It's too bad the bees just turn it. Well, you can't just turn it on to the side. The bees outfit to a uh, uh, frame. Yeah. I need to be gentle with this one because there's queen cups on it. So, what if they swore right after that you transfer them? They won't. But they may need the queen, because I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find the queen. I don't know if I'm going to accidentally kill her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, on the, this comb here, we're, we're a little over halfway done, but I'm getting towards the end of the box. I'm running out of frames, so I'm not going to be able to preserve all the comb. And, and through this process, since the opening is so small, I don't know what's going to happen with the queen. I don't know if she's going to get vacuumed up and damaged or crushed in, in one of these processes. This is, a, this is getting very messy and, and cumbersome. Uh, but we have several queen cells uh, on these combs here that I'm trying to preserve and be very gentle with. Uh, this top cup here actually has a larva in it. Uh, there's some eggs in the smaller ones. And there's a larva in this one, long one over here and eggs in the smaller ones. So, you know, worst case, if I accidentally kill the queen, then they can raise a new one. Um, this is going to be a big messy job and they're going to have a lot of work to do to clean up my mess. So, just going to keep going and keep doing the best we can. So we found the queen. That's really the hardest part of this whole job because you never know if you're crushing the queen or, or if she's escaped on you but got really lucky and she showed up the, the bees kind of parted and revealed her to me there she is right there at the very top she's cleaning herself because she's sticky with honey uh, the bees are helping her and that's Queen Flora so she's safe and sound in the cage now I can put her in the box and hopefully that will help make it a little bit easier to get those bees out of the out of that cavity and into the box. We're all finished. We got most of the comb into the box. There was so much comb in there, much more than I had anticipated. And I didn't prepare with enough frames and boxes. I only filled one medium box with the 10 frames. 
with all the comb and I picked the best comb out of the bunch with the worker brood and nice long pieces if I could find them and got got it all filled up we got the queen as I showed you um, then whatever comb was left over we ended up just you know shoving it into a bucket there was a lot of honey and pollen and we ended up having to harvest some uh, worker brood and drone brood which I didn't really want to have to do but I didn't have any other option at this point because I was not fully prepared for this much comb there's still a lot of bees here um, they're I'm gonna let them leave them alone and let them see if they can reorient to the box for a little while and just uh, do a little observation otherwise we're all done and we're just gonna be doing a little cleanup here that's it <laughs>